everybody. Uh, it's a little bit late at night. I just got off of work. But for this very first stage of making Amy March's dress and her bodice in particular, I have been wanting to take this pattern from my extant, I guess late 1860s, maybe early 1870s bodice and put the pattern on paper and then make a mock-up and try to, you know, use a pattern that is already accessible to me. So, yes, I've got my camera up here and I've got my iPad over here. I'm sorry, I only have one camera. So we're just gonna try to make everything work out to the best of our ability. So, let's go ahead and get started. Let's see here. Let's try to figure out this first initial pattern piece. I can't really say I've ever actually taken a pattern from a um, garment before, so this should be interesting. All right, let's see here. There are three bones in the front. Where's the seam line? bodice section is entirely one piece. All right, so width-wise, okay. It is eight and a half inches, okay. With an inch and a half, 17. Like there's a gusset under here. Center back seam. All right, so I finally finished putting all of the pattern pieces to paper. And I think I've got everything correct. Um, I am a little bit concerned about the, the sleeve here, but I'm not very good at doing sleeves anyway. I think everything is correct. So now the next step would be to just go ahead and put <laughs> all of this design uh, into a draft. But this is pretty good so far. I think this is actually pretty nice. And if I end up really liking it, um, I think we should be able to put this on my website. But TBD, first things first. Let's get this started.
here we are back at the final drawing board. This pattern directly from my extant piece was uh, a very small on me in the bust, surprisingly. And so what I decided that I needed to do was, of course, make these darts in the correct placements here. Everywhere else fit perfectly. Um, I just extended this bottom edge out by, let's see, by literally just half an inch, tapered all the way up to uh, where the top of these darts are. And then I added about an inch and a half to the inside seam here. And I believe that that should adjust this here as well as cover up all the gaping in the front and make sure it closes all the way. So I think what I'm going to do now is take these three pieces um, and cut out my lining fabric and as well as my fashion fabric. And I'm a little bit nervous, but I am not going to cut out the sleeve pattern yet, even though I have it ready to go and draft it and everything. I just want to do a couple of mock-ups on this one. And to get to this pattern, I've done three mock-ups with the corset on. So, oh, it's the scary part of actually cutting out the real deal stuff. So let's go ahead and do it. Hello, and welcome to the voiceover part of this video. Long story short, uh, my sewing machine is not working. Neither is Old Faithful, which if you have been following my channel for uh, any given amount of time, you would know that Old Faithful is a hand crank sewing machine. And it's very sad, but she's uh, she does not really like certain kinds of fabric. So that just meant I have to hand sew everything. So this entire dress from the petticoats all the way to the outermost layer is completely sewn by hand. So let's just give a little bit of a props appreciation out there for myself. So here I am finally working on this very last panel, but you know, I've been a little bit distracted because setting up the Christmas tree and ran out of lights for the top, so. But, I was talking to my friend Vasi today, and she said, you know, have you actually ever worked on a Victorian garment if you don't have at least a blood stain somewhere? Well, there it is, right there. You know, and I was doing so good at making sure I didn't stain either side of this fabric, front or back, 
but I guess, you know, it was just bound to happen. But everything is looking really, really nice. And um, all of my hand sewing is actually <laughs> looking really good. And all I have to do le now is to just finish up sewing all of these panels together and then tack these uh, seams open. Um, and, p and possibly see if I need to add boning channels, which there are three channels that need to go in the front. I need to find some buttons in my stash that would work. And I also need to consider a contrasting color for the next part of this video, which would be just all about decorating. So I'm going to finish sewing up everything, iron it, and oh yeah, hopefully it'll go very quickly. Yet, alas, it did not go very quickly. This, in fact, did take about a month and a half to sew just all of the seams, which there are several. I have completely finished watching Rings of Power, Netflix's Wednesday, Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris, most of The Office, as well as majority of Parks and Rec and a couple other shows splashed in there here and there. That is how long it has taken me to sew this. I am a slow sewer. <laughs> Sometimes I have a tendency to make very small, tight, tiny stitches, which is unnecessary for some seams, but you know, better be safe than sorry. But we have finally reached the point where I can actually start working on the sleeves. Here we are, finally nearing the home stretch. Last night I spent quite a bit of time drafting up the sleeve pattern, and I spent a little bit more time on it this afternoon, just adjusting it and making sure that it fits absolutely perfectly, and the sleeve lining and everything, and everything so far has been done completely by hand still. But here's what I'm planning on doing. Um, on both of the sleeves, there's going to be a cuff opening here, just like what was in my extant. But what I'm going to do on the lining portion, I'm going to cut it right above where the cuff actually begins, like the cuff opening. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this part off here and then base down this ivory uh, I believe it's um, silk satin and create a little bit of a contrasting color that would just tie in the whole look together. This is going to be the accent color. So that's where I'm at now, but I just have to sew a little bit more <laughs> and uh, make sure everything is lined up appropriately. And uh, I'm just so excited. I think it's looking out really, really good. My table is a disaster. And sometimes I migrate to the floor. But this is relatively like a general pattern of what the sleeves look like with some alterations. So anyway, get back to it. On my extant garment, there was one beautiful, simple little detail that I really wanted to incorporate into my dress. And that was making these cute little ruffles in the same white satin with some pressed tulle. And I thought that would just be such an adorable little feature, but also it wouldn't exactly be recognizable or noticeable after it's been stitched on and it's relatively hidden by my arm and gloves. With the lining all inside the sleeve itself, it just blended really well and attached beautifully to the white satin. Another feature that I really wanted to add but didn't were bows to the dress. And part of the reason why I didn't add the bows was because I was trying to figure out what on earth I was going to do with this fringe. This fringe kicked my patootie. Let me tell you. I got this fringe initially from an antique store, and this was just attached to some fabric, which was a curtain. And 
I, I don't know. I, there's just, the color really was just not working. It made the whole bodice look very dingy and dirty and the little tassels were just too thick for a bodice like this. So I ended up going to the store and getting some very thin dainty fringe in the same ivory white color. When I was restyling the designs that I was thinking of using for the fringe itself, I was kind of panicking a little bit, thinking that this bodice is looking way too much like a cowboy, especially with the stark contrast of the bright creamy white against the blue. And it really took quite a lot of time for me to just have it just sitting on the mannequin and taking a step back and just letting it just live there. Leaning even more into the description of Amy March being a perfect snow maiden. And since this project is ending in middle December, a week before Christmas, it just comes full circle. And also the little white fringe looks a little bit like icicles. I was sold and absolutely fell in love with this. And with the fringe detail going across my shoulders and at the waist, it really creates a very nice illusion that I had very wide shoulders and a very small waist. Also, I didn't film the skirt sewing process because honestly, I was over it. I was tired of sewing by hand and I didn't really want to film that process because I thought it was boring. So without further ado, please enjoy this grand reveal of Amy March's dress. Thank you. 